Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Objects 8 in Part 4 of Module 1, and we've got four object questions. Get elements greater than 10 at property. Get first element of property. Get nth element of property. Get last element of property. Now, the first one is going to require us to iterate over an array that's located inside of an object. <coughs> Excuse me. And the next three are going to require us to just access that key which is, uh, sorry, we're going to access the array located inside of an object for the last three, but no iteration is going to be necessary. Now, previously we had gone over the pseudocode and the logic behind if there's no property at the given key, basically our edge case is here. Now for our purposes, we are not going to go back over that pseudocode, but I'm going to describe each one as we do it. So the first thing we want to check is to make sure that there actually is a property at the given key. Uh, for those of you who watched the other one, this is the situation where we make sure that the address actually exists before we leave to start delivering the pizza or the package or whatever it is that we're doing. In the event that it is not defined, we're going to return, let's say, an empty array. Next one we're going to check is we're going to make sure that the um, value in question located at the object at the given key uh, is an array. If it is not, or if we should say if array.isArray of the object at the key is equal to false, we know that there is not an array there. And this would be the case where instead of an apartment building where you're going to deliver the pizzas to, it's like a park or something that you wouldn't deliver pizzas to. And in that case, we're going to return an empty array, which I suppose could correspond to like an empty pizza box. You don't want to take the metaphor too far, but the idea of a delivery person can be very useful for objects and arrays. So the last one we're going to make sure is that there's actually something to the object meaning that if it's an empty array located inside of the object, we don't really need to do anything. In this case, we're going to do that by checking to see if the length of the value, which we know is an array, or which we know should be, actually we know it's an array at this point because we know it's defined by line 2, and we know it's an array by line 5. So here, we know it's an array. If the length is 0, we can, again can skip most of the actual work and just return an empty array. Now at this point, we have a couple of options. I like the option where we create a result array. And that's going to be what we're eventually going to return. Then we're going to iterate over the array that's located at object at key. Object at key length. Skip the whole i is less than part. Uh, accidentally, not on purpose, of course. And okay, so now we're iterating. Object at key at i is going to be the current value, and we're looking for all of the current values essentially that are greater than ten. So if, and the current value we're going to access by saying object at key, which gives us access to the array, at i, which is the current value, needs to be greater than 10. In the event that it is, we're going to push to the result, push to the result, object at key <clears throat> at i. Okay. Here are edge cases. So make sure that it's defined, make sure that it's an array, make sure the array has some values inside of it. Then we have a result array that we're creating. We're going to iterate over the array located inside of the object. We're going to check to see if the current value is greater than 10. In the event that it is, we push it to the result and then return the result array at the end. We run the tests and we're in good shape. All right, so this has... Okay, so this one's a little different. This one wants us to return undefined, but the edge cases are very similar. So the first one, again, is going to be if object at key is equal to undefined, undefined, we're going to return undefined. Next one is if the array dot is array, when we apply it to the object at the given key, if that's equal to false, then we don't really need to care about the first element of the array because it's not an array. Now again, that's similar information to what we've done previously, but reiterating it in your mind can be a good way to ensure that you remember to do this in the event that you need to. And the last edge case is if the array is empty, it should return undefined. Uh, you might note that were we to do what we're about to do outside of an edge case, we wouldn't need the edge case that we're about to write, but writing edge cases can be a good way to uh, compartmentalize your approach to a problem. So we're going to write this edge case, whether or not the uh, array in question has a length of zero, and if it does, we're going to return undefined. But you'll see in a moment that this would actually already happen. If we do what we're about to do, which is to say we need a 
way to access the first element of the array in question. The array in question is accessed by object.key. The first element is going to be 0. And then we can just hit, well, that's going to need to be a semicolon. And then we're just going to return that expression. You may note, though, if this is an array, but it has a length of 0, an array at 0 without any elements is undefined. So this part is actually superfluous, meaning we don't really need it. But we're going to add it because it's a good idea to think about things this way. So check our edge cases. If they're all good, we access the first element, which is located at index 0 of the array itself. Run the tests, and we're good. Get nth element of property. This is the exact same problem that we just did. So I'm going to, uh, what are we going to do? Should we copy it? Yeah, let's copy it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy these two edge cases. I would highly suggest that you do not do this. Uh, the practice you would get writing those out is invaluable. And let's talk about if the array is empty, it should return undefined. So if we access an empty array at any given index, it's going to be undefined. So we're going to skip the third edge case that we did in the previous problem. If n is out of range, it should return undefined. Same idea. If we have an array that has four values and we check to see what the value of the array at index 50 is, it's just going to say undefined. So uh, these two notes here take care of themselves, which is to say the expression we're about to return is going to return undefined in both the case where the array is empty and the case where n is out of range. So previously, we had to get the first uh, value. We had return object at key at 0. For this one, rather than 0, we just want n. And we're in good shape. Last element. So let's write out the edge case for this one. We'll say if object at key is equal to undefined. And sometimes people will say, hey, undefined is a falsy value. So theoretically, couldn't I just say if object at key? And you could. The problem with that is going to be uh, come in a couple of forms. Undefined is not the only falsy value. So in cases where perhaps the value of the uh, object at the given key is 0, perhaps it's an empty string, and there are a couple other falsy values that might be the case that we wouldn't want to uh, lump into the undefined possibility. So uh, if that's the case, we're going to return undefined. If array dot is array of object at key. If that's equal to false, we know there is not an array where we need there to be one, which is to say where the problem thinks there should be one. So we'll return undefined. Um, you probably have gotten it at this point, but just make sure that you don't put undefined in quotes. Some people run into that issue. Uh, undefined without quotes is an actual type of value, which is to say a undefined type of value. Uh, if you put it in quotes, then it's just another string. So if the array is empty, it should return undefined. I would proffer that what we're about to do is going to do that for the same reason that we said previously. So this is the last problem in this section, so let's just get to it. Um, we want the last element. So we could say last element is equal to an array length minus 1 by default. The way we access the array is object at key. We'll say dot length, and then we'll say minus one. That's going to give us our last element. Then we return the object at key, which accesses the array, at the last element. We could absolutely have just put this value or this expression right here, but it might be a little bit easier to parse what's going on here if we have it on two separate lines. And also you figure that let's say that the array is empty. This would be 0. Minus 1 is going to ask for the value of an array at minus 1. If there is no values, if there are no values in the array, an array at negative 1 is going to be undefined. So we're in good shape. Oh, so thanks for watching. Uh, four relatively similar problems. But the idea is that we're going to get better and better at identifying how to do things to arrays that we knew how to do, and now, now we know how to do them when they're inside of objects. We're just kind of building on the skills that we've developed so far. So if you are having a good time, that's awesome. If you are not, perhaps you should go back to some of the previous problems and examine them more carefully, uh, or even back to module zero where we go over the syntax explicitly. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.